Welcome back to P4. Today we're looking at modeling with differential equations, unit 6.7. Now, there's nothing new in this work video, um, following on from the last video. It's just applying differential equations to model real life situations. Now, common ones kind of include where water flows into a bucket and out of a leak, sometimes both at the same time, and stuff like that, where you might be looking at the rate of change of volume or the rate of change of height and things like that. And for these kind of questions, you also need to know your formulae for things like the volume of a cylinder and stuff like that. But let's get stuck into a couple of examples. So here we have a past paper question. We can see that liquid is pouring in at a constant rate of 20 centimetres cubed per second. And then it's leaking out at a rate that is proportional to the volume already in the container. And we've got to first explain this scenario. So dV by dt is the rate of change of volume with respect to time. Yeah, it's just that rate of change of volume. Now we have 20 coming in and then going out we have a value that's proportional to the volume and then it's got to be negative because it's leaving the container. And like a lot of things, you know, in maths are certainly proportional. We can then replace that with a K for a constant. And this is essentially what we need to talk about. So pouring in with Pouring in and then pouring out, we can say it's a negative for loss, therefore, it's proportional to V, which is going to be negative KV, and that's where we get our dV by dt equals 20 minus KV. Part B is to solve this differential equation. So dV by dt equals 20 minus kV. So rearranging, we get 1 over 20 minus kV dV. And on the other side is just the dt. So we're going to get ln 20 minus kV here. Now, I need to be careful, k is a constant, like a number. If this was minus 3, I'd be multiplying by minus a third. This is minus k, so multiplying by minus 1 over k. And then we've got t plus c on the other side. Now, it tells me that the container is initially empty. That means at t equals 0, v would be 0. Okay, so we get minus 1 over k ln 20 minus 0 equals 0 plus c. So c is minus 1 over k ln 20. So my equation is at the moment 1 over k, negative, sorry, ln 20 minus kv equals t minus 1 over k ln 20. Now, this is the kind of form we need to get it in. So the first thing I need to do is get both my logs on the same side. And if I look carefully, it's going to be a minus kt. So that will help influence what I do next. So it means it's better off to take this to the right side. And then take the t 
over onto the left. So just making a bit of a room, but this is what I've got. So I can take the one over K out, or if I just multiply through by K, I get minus KT on the left. And we've got LN 20 minus KV minus LN 20. Now, subtracting logs is the same as dividing, so we get 20 minus kV over 20. And then what I want to do is change this, the form of this. So it's going to become 20 minus kV over 20 equals e to the minus kT. And we want v equals. So first thing, let's multiply by the 20. Let's do a little change around. So kV equals 20 minus 20 e to the minus kt. And then we need to divide by k. And here's our values of A and B from the question. So part C tells us that dv by dt equals 10 when t equals 5. So let's go from here. We've got 10 equals 20 minus kv. Now, as it stands, obviously, we don't have anything in terms of t here. But we have a v equals down here. So let's substitute that in. So we've got 10 equals... In fact, let's rearrange first, shall we? Um, KV will equal 10. So K times 20 over K minus 20 over KE to the negative KT is going to be equal to 10. The Ks are going to end up cancelling, so we get 20 minus 20 e to the negative kt equals 10. Uh, so we get 10 equals 20 e to the minus kt. If I divide by the 20, I'm going to get a half equals e to the minus kt. Now remember that t equals 5. So that's a half equals e to the minus 5k. Rearranging, I'm going to get e to the positive 5k equals 2. Remember that this is like 1 over, so I multiply by this and then multiply by the 2. And then this is going to be 5k equals ln 2, so k equals 1 fifth ln 2. So substituting for k into my equation, I get this. It's a bit messy. I can substitute, I can factorize out uh, some of this, not a problem. But I'm not gonna bother because we just wanna know what happens when t equals 10. So just substitute t equals 10 into this. And as you can see here, we're gonna have like 100 over ln2 minus 100 over ln to e to the minus 2 ln 2. 2 ln 2 is going to become ln 4. Which then will become 1 quarter. So we've got 100 over ln2 minus, and we're going to have a quarter of this, so it's going to be 25 ln2, which is 75 over ln2. It doesn't tell us how to leave the answer, so I can leave it like this, or of course I can find this as a decimal number, which will give me approximately this volume. Okay, so it's kind of up to you, but I would just leave it in terms of log. 
This is quite an old question, back from 2005. Um, often on some of the newer questions, you do tend to see it as leave as an exact answer a bit more often, but not, you know, completely stuck with that every time. I'll give you a couple more past paper questions to try and I'll go through the answers at the end of the video. Now, we want it in terms of v, so let's take the v. So v equals x cubed. So x equals v to the power one third, or the cube root of v. And then substitute that in. So that then gives me 2v to the one third, which is exactly what we needed. So you can see that we want to find the volume, but if you look in here, there's no value of R. So we need to eliminate R. And the only other thing that we can use to put together is that we can kind of turn this into a big right angle triangle if we just look in 2D. And substitute this into my formula, I'll get uh, just stop in a second. I can't remember if I already said this, but remember, it's this you get from the units, you know, centimeters cubed per second. So it's got to be volume per second. So that's why you get the rate. 
So we want to find the rate of change of h. So we want to find dh by dt. So we got dh by dt is going to be dv by dt, which gives us our dt's. We need to get rid of that dv and we need a dh. So we need a dh by dv, which we'll be able to get from here.